friends that sent in messages. I'm still replying their messages yeah. on Instagram. I haven't even opened Facebook. I know when I get there now, it's <laughs> tons of messages. What are you going for? I appreciate you all. Thank you. I love you guys. What are you going for the spa? Oh, yes, yeah. I'll, I'll pick a date uh, next week and do that. Yeah, because I need a full day and nobody should escort me, please. <laughs> <Not very long. laughs> Thank you so much for the yeah, gift. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. How are you doing, Tokwe? Yeah, I'm very good. So today I'm going to gist my kata gist. Oh, yeah. I, I reserved this. You did this yesterday. Honestly, um, I think that it, it, you, kata is about leadership. You know, you will see intentionality in the leadership. You will see response to challenges when they face the blockade, the way they responded. A country that is in the desert boasting of food sustainability. Wow. They, they, they had a plan. They said if they ever face a blockade and they don't have food, they have grain stored up for months mm -hmm. to, to ensure that nobody in the country would have issues of food shortage. Well done, it's Joseph. intentionality of planning. The leaders caring about the people, putting structure on ground, protecting the interests. Because I went to a business conference, so mm -hmm. the business people came to meet us to coach us to come and invest in Qatar mm. and we're selling how wonderful Qatar is mm. but no matter how wonderful it is you cannot own a business without a Qatari in the mainland if you mm. want to be in the mainland a Qatari must be a 51 percent share in your, in your business wow Woo. Matter. Oh. That, 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 that's, that's their way of protecting the interest their resources of the indigent yeah. also indigenous of, yeah. of, the of their it's, country it's, so, it's interesting it's just so when i when i saw so, when i when, when you're talking i didn't remember the video i sent to the group about the vision for lagos i mean you guys to watch it when i was just watching that video it just shows visionary leadership so we're not there yet we are still groaning but if Lagos can achieve what I saw in that video, mm. the next 20 years will be so proud of the development that's happened because mm. that's a vision. That's somebody thinking, I've been mean, intentional yeah. about what we want to do for Lagos. So watch that video. And now you're inspired. saying it, and I'm thinking, I would like to see those videos and messages for Taraba State. I would like to see it for <laughs> Plateau State. You know, I want this to be widespread. Of course. Yeah. Yes. We, um, Lagos is good, it's leading the way, so we know that it can be done in Nigeria. Absolutely. Because, you know, the question would always be, well, in the abroad, that's where they're doing it, far away from us. They have different factors that make it possible. But yeah, hopefully. How are you doing, though? I'm Maya? fine. I'm Probably good. Good on you today. Yeah, thank you. I think I love the color. It's very it's cool, light, and it just makes for a happy ambience. You know, I think for me, what, vibe I see, what this mood. color does to me for you mm. is like today tones you down. It calms you down. Mm. It really brings the hippie hippie Mariam to calm down. Like you know, what? I mean, I'm intentionally going to be calm. Ah, uh, but That's she's usually what, very usually calm. calm. But you know, sometimes. <laughs> This color just makes you look as if it makes us know that today is a calm day. It reminds me Don't of the crystal amethyst. I wish you just added that on top. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to talk about our uh, activity this Saturday as Yay, part of our line of activities. Yes. Leading up to your view at 10, we'll be having a walk for equity on Saturday. Please join us at TVC. Mm. It's on a long walk. We're just going to walk down CMD Road and back. And then we'll have aerobics. We have a um, you know, just a few talks, health talks and all that. So please join us. It's part of what we're using to round up the International mm -hmm. Women's Month because the idea is that women come together. And we're specifically inviting men, the men who are supporting women. If you're a he or she who believe in equity for women, please join us. We're, we want to celebrate you on that day. So all the men, you'll be our, you'll be our focus, you know. So we'd like you to be on that walk. Please join us Saturday. Um, call time is 7 a.m., but we hope to start walking by 8 so before the sun comes. That's why we're back in time and everybody can go home. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, we're going to start with the nation. Court order restraining IU deepens PDP's post poll crisis. U.S., $100 million for five West African nations. Supplementary polls hold April 15th in Oyo, Imo, Edo, and other states. 489 electoral infractions recorded. 791 arrested during polls, says police. Colloquium put off for prayers to Max Tinubu's um, birthday. 77% Nigerian women risk skin cancer for using toning cream. How to make Nigerians unleash potential by ex-UK Prime Minister. Ngige meet Emefile Ajayero to prevent NLC strike. All right, which story? Uh, the, Minister of 
again um, is taking steps to avert the impending nation nationwide strike of the Nigerian Labour Congress that was supposed to start on Wednesday. So we know that the Labour Union have threatened to embark on a nationwide industrial action if the cash crunch, fuel scarcity and electricity tariff increase were not addressed. And in response to the strike uh, threat by the NLC, Ngege had to invite the leadership of the NLC, the central rank of Nigerian management, to a meeting in his office yesterday to resolve the differences. And it was a 10-man delegation from the NLC uh, including President Joe Ajero, the General Secretary Emmanuel Uguaja, uh, CBN Governor Godwin Emefile, who was accompanied by two other people, Deputy Governors Kingsley Obiora and Ade Shonobi. And in his opening speech, that uh, in Gigi, he was saying that he's been doing something about this matter, that immediately he received the letter from the NLC. He forwarded the same letter to the CBN Governor before traveling out of the country for an International Labor Organization Governing Board meeting and directed the permanent Secretary and Trade Union Services and Industrial Relations Department to follow up on the matter. Uh, Emefele on his part said that when he received the letter from the Labor Ministry, he called the president of the NLC to brief him on steps that he's taking to alleviate uh, the sufferings of the masses. And he also went further to have a meeting with the president, which resulted in them, you know, giving a lot of money to the uh, deposit money banks. And that's why Nigerians are able to withdraw some money from the bank. So um, the NLC you know, went ahead and said mm -hmm. if in, um, the CBN governor had you know, consulted with the stakeholders before going around this policy, he yeah. wouldn't have felt it this way. But he just went ahead on his own right. and did it. So hopefully they will have another meeting today which will determine if the strike will continue or not. Yeah, the deadline, February 25th. Yeah. Trying to do some <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have the um, former British Prime Minister yeah. Boris Johnson visit, he, uh, he's visited Lagos and he's in Lagos for the 16th, 16th Osigwe Anyam Osigwe Lecture Series. And um, the lecture theme was Rehumanizing Human Experience. And um, according to the former um, British Prime Minister. First of all, he says he's excited to be in Nigeria again, and that, uh, and then he gave us conditions that he thinks will make Nigerians realize this enormous potential that we have. He says, um, uh, equality before the law, enforcement of laws without fear or favor, election of a leader through fair, free and fair process is very necessary. He says, prioritizing education and freedom of speech is also important. Also, in his speech, you could see he was trying to forge this relationship between the UK a better relationship between the UK and Nigeria. Um, he talks about um, Nigeria being a superpower for renewable energy, even still being the producer of oil and gas. And he says now is the time when many countries are you know, going their separate ways or disintegrating, but now is the time that Nigeria and the UK can um, come together instead and forge a deeper right. relationship that would affect the Nigerian, you know, Nigeria positively, okay. impact on our economy positively. All right, so supplementary polls. INEC is saying that April 15th, we're going to be having polls in Oyo, Imo, Edo, and other states for senatorial and um, other state constituencies. However, more importantly, they'll be having the governorship elections um, in Kebi State and Adama. If you recall, there were issues, the, the INEC had declared the elections there, the gubernatorial elections there, inconclusive. And um, the results from um, Adamo especially was because the, um, the APC challenger had got about 390, over 390,000 um, votes, while the uh, incumbent had gotten over 420,000. However, the difference between, between the, what the incumbent had scored and what Binani scored was less than the number of um, registered voters within that area. So there had to be a rerun. So um, there, were, there were issues of ballot snatching, ballot box snatching and all that. So INEC has asked for a rerun, and that will happen April 15th, hopefully by then, because that's the governorship many of us are waiting for, the th possibly the first female governor. Mm. Where we're hoping that if that if it goes that, that way, if the, if, if the if votes that's what come the people again, want. That, if that's what the people want, it would be, be great to have that. But it's going to be a rerun on that, in that state, and hopefully let people come out and vote so that their voices can be heard. So the vice president to the U U.S. is in Africa, a week-long visit, checking three African countries, and she started off in Ghana. <laughs> That's Kamala Harris. And on the visit, she has pledged the 100 million US dollars for um, five West African nations. And this is to counter the effects of 
the investment that China and Russia have made into Africa, saying that there's a lot of infrastructural um, investment by Chinese into Africa and a lot of military presence by Russia into Africa, yeah. especially because Nana um, Akuf, I want to be, I want to pronounce um, Akufo Odo, the president of Ghana, had said that he is concerned about the presence of Wagner, which is Wagner Group, which is a military Russian military um, group and their presence in Burkina Faso very close to Ghana, and the fact that there's a lot of their military presence, a lot of West African countries are fighting one form of terror or um, civil, um, unrest. civil unrest. He said struggling to quell violence of armed groups within their countries, mm -hmm. and they feel that um, this, this, they, their presence, bringing in that money, funding the military, supporting the West African countries would help reduce the instability. However, um, the president of Ghana said he is worried about the fact that Africa is also going, is once again going to be the playground of, of um, world powers yeah. fighting for That's supremacy. Yeah. Okay, the punch. Mm. Are you Moscow? G5 governors article campaign clash. Ngige, Emefele, Mid and LC over plan strike. Lagos tenant stabs friend to death during argument. Ramadan, VC senator elect, advised Muslims on kindness and sacrifice. Abacha died on the eve of dad's planned execution. Nigeria can defeat terrorism like UK, says Boris Johnson. Don't travel to states of origin for, for censors, says NPC. And um, reps invite ministers, firms over $2.4 billion oil sale. The human interest story. So a woman, Annie Ophili, uh, allegedly st stabbed her friend, Glory Okon, to death at her residence on the Greenville Estate, Badore, in Aja area of Lagos State. So according to the story, said Okon paid a visit to her friend, uh, Ophili, and then they started having a conversation. And while they were conversing, it degenerated into an argument, and then the scuffle started. They were shouting at each other. Neighbors were trying to, you know, open the door, but they were not able to till they had to go and get the landlord. And before they could get into the building, she had stabbed her friend at the back and at the neck. She was on, on a pool of blood in a pool of blood and you know the friend was quickly rushed to the hospital but by the time they got there she was pronounced dead and then taken to the mortuary as at the time they were writing the story they didn't have an idea what caused the issue but the police is aware she's been arrested investigations are going to be carried out and then she will be prosecuted found guilty all right let's go on a quick break when we come back continue with our review stay with us we'll be right back Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Staying with us, we're still reviewing Punch. Uh, anybody had a story? Yes, okay. I was going to take the story of um, same, similar to um, the story to Mariam took about Boris Johnson, but this time he was talking about how Nigeria can defeat terrorism in a similar way that UK did. He mentioned <coughs> how the Metropolitan Police um, were so impartial and supervised, I mean, in, in securing UK that they arrested Prince Andrew. Um, who is this one of the sons, um, the son of the late queen? He also mentioned how the challenges with Nigeria. We there's we need freedom, we need security, we need democracy, we need openness and tolerance to achieve urban success. He um, spoke about the fact that he can't, we can't continue to allow groups like Boko Haram and the Islamic State, where they believe that there's something wrong with reading a book, where children cannot read. A book he akin that to the fact that we are wasting human um our human resource human resource he said he would he ended with the thought that um he cannot wait for we, we nigerians cannot wait for the change to happen there's a lot of breakdown right now right. and when some nations are being disentangled from one another is the time when nigeria should stand up and be great and that uk and nigeria are two strong democracies in the world casting aspersions on russia and china <laughs> all right so dr babatune d uh, the son of the former chief of the defense staff late lieutenant Oladipo Dia was speaking about the life and times of his father. If you recall, that father recently passed, and many have actually 
um, sent their condolences. He was particularly um, reminiscent on the how his father cheated there twice. And this was a popular story for many who knew that uh, there, there was, was where the first one was that when um, he went to the restroom and then a bomb exploded. Mm. You know, and the fact that he was also sentenced to death. And the day before the sentence was supposed to carry out, that's when Abacha died. So everything, so mm. just believe that it was one man that really cheated death twice and, and God was with him. And we're just talking about the great man his father was and may he so he rest in peace. And, he, and he's getting a state burial. He's getting a state burial. He's getting a state burial to be a good state, a good state, which is fantastic. Yeah, I have a story in Punch. Um, the National Population Commission has said that it has put measures to guard against all forms of malpractices ahead of the forthcoming population and housing um, census. Um, so in response that the spokesperson for the commission, Isiaka Yahaya, in response to you know questions on how it will take place, he says people are, should, should stay where they are um, to be counted. They are not to move to their states of origin. So you don't need to get on a donkey and travel to Bethlehem. <laughs> um, it says it's totally against the essence of census if you leave where you reside to go back home because they need to understand where people are so those who would need um you know facilities like health and education so it's important to know the number of people that are in a particular area at the time and then he also said something he said this is a de facto census where they'll be asking practical questions about those who are living but not those who are yet to be born they said they are not we have not trained our enumerator to count people who are yet to be born. Mm -hmm. And they are saying that they'll make sure that this has, you know, it goes smoothly, has no issues, and it has, you know, integrity. So, Okay, Daily Sun, more trouble for Ayo. I respect Yoruba, can't disparage them, says Nwanyawu. FG moves to avert labor strike over narrow scarcity. Um, I am Osigwe Lecture, ex-UK Prime Minister, um, sixth stronger Nigeria between ties. Fanika Ode replies UK High Commissioner. FMC Umwa here performs 11 kidney transplants and um, records 80% success. That's good news. Yeah. Polls. Police arrest 781 electoral offenders, recover 132 weapons nationwide. And pro Tinubu protests rock Abuja. Uh, suspended headsmen kill five in Bini communities. Go ahead. Good news. So kidney transplants and nephrologist and immediate past chairman of Nigeria Medical Association Abia State Chapter, Chimezi Okuono, said that the Federal Medical Center in Omoa here, Abia State, performed its 11th kidney transplant with 80% success in all the cases. He said the latest successful case was performed on a 68-year-old diabetic and hypertensive patient. And the patient suffered from end-stage kidney disease. He's been on dialysis at the Beatitudes Mediplex and Kidney Center, Omoa here. Um, according to them, he said... Um, that um, the hospital has been um, having huge successes in the kidney transplant since inception. And they have a lot of issues that they are going through, which would um, also, um, which, which sort of challenges the kidney transplant. However, that um, they need support from a lot of people, politicians, people from across Nigeria to patronize instead of taking the resources and seeking medical care outside the country and says some of the challenges that they have is the manpower drain, out of pocket payment by the patient, and need for more equipment for a kidney transplant. But by the time people patronize, they will be able to get money for some of these things. It's a very good one. We have good hospitals here, we have great doctors here who are doing the job, and they need a lot of support from the state and federal government. And we also need to support them by seeking medical care within Nigeria. So there was a protest in Abuja. Supporters insist that so these, these supporters under the Natives, they call themselves okay, on the ages of the natives to counter calls for cancellation of the presidential poll. They were coming out to say that they are declaring uh, absolutely that no mandate was lost. INEC performed credibly well and that the election was free and fair. But what was really disheartening was the fact that it disrupted. There were lots of um, daggers drawn, broken bottles, mm -hmm. uh, attack fellow protesters, smashing of bonnets of cars, disrupting vehicular movement, forcing most of the cars to drive against traffic. This happened in Abuja, and it's quite disturbing that protesters come out and then attacking mm -hmm. each other. You know, I saw a video that was saying recently that during um, Abacha, during um, MK of 1993, mm. there was these kind of disruptions and people died. But Nigeria is still standing. Th things will happen. People will die and go. And but Nigeria is still here. So if you use your life to sacrifice, what's the point of going to protest and then go and start stabbing somebody and bringing drawing knives? It doesn't make any sense. Let us tell our children, our loved ones, yes, protests should be, should, be, should be civil 
and should be smooth and um, it shouldn't be it shouldn't turn to a bloodbath and this, this is really quite painful but there's nothing wrong in protesting that they're insisting that their candidate got over a million votes and the 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 eight million eight million votes are also human beings and they also that their, their mandate was not stolen that um they also that this remember there was a protest saying that the mandate was stolen mm -hmm. that um they had to protest for the other party i think it was labor or pdp but the apc guys are also coming out saying that they also we voted, voted. We voted. <laughs> so we're not we're not insects now we're human beings <laughs> all right then let let's move on to you know, i have a story Wait. um let me tell you the story of ethnic profiling and panicardi's response um oh so, ffk yes ffk the former aviation minister and spokesperson for the presidential campaign has responded to the british um envoy and is the, let me just quote the British envoy because it was of the opinion that Femi Pankayode's statement was inflammatory and that it was ethnic. It, it, the statement was that um, people shouldn't. Um, inciting. It was inciting. And he said that nobody should be chanting anti Igbo messages um, um, or walking the streets by the polling unit, which they observed in their. Um, that's the UK. Observers. The observers observed that and he said that the APC should have distanced itself from FFK's statement when he said that Lagos was no man's land. Well, FF, FFK's reply was very, very, very serious. Very, very said, FFK. F, very FFK. He said, who is, is my, this is my response, um, in addition to my response to the little it's Islander. It's Quotimo. Yes, it's he said, Quotimo. permit me to add the following <coughs> addendum Excuse to me. my earlier um, personal response to the little in Englander. <laughs> then he went on to say that the British diplomat had no right to interfere in what happens in Nigeria, that the, they are supposed to, they're not supposed to interfere in our internal affairs or to be partial. They are not supposed to tell us what to do. They're supposed to, I stand by my words that's according to him and we do not need any lessons from him. Foreign diplomats come to this country to enhance our relationship, not to give us lectures. Of course, said other things that are not relevant, but what he says is the British had no business interfering with their um, Nigerian What's about the British to come out with their list, Sean? What would they do? No, no, do you know that list? No, they are not supposed to show us the list. They said, they said they wouldn't. They said they wouldn't, yes. This oh. time around, they wouldn't show the list. Yes. But they know but the they mentioned his name. And it's growing. Okay, Vanguard. <laughs> Find a story of not taking. Lagos government grants access to Christian terminal classes. Kidnappers demand 50 million naira for abducted core members and four INEC officials in Kogi. Cash crunch and Gige wait in with NLC, CBN over planned strike. Any attempt to stifle press freedom on accept to says US Embassy. Health, Nigeria's access to safe water still moving target. How Nigerian can unleash human potential, says ex British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Nine days after INEC holds on to result in 183 constituencies. All right, so the Lagos State Ministry of Education yesterday granted permission for classes in the terminal classes to, uh, to access Christian High School for the physical learning ahead of their examinations due to begin soon. So if you know, recall, those classes that are graduating or moving to the next class, it's important for them to go back to school. So uh, if you the school was, was shut down over the death the controversial death of the 12-year-old Whitney Adedino, who died on February with alleged electrocution, according to the coroner's um, um, inquest. The Commissioner for Education, Mrs. Folashadi Adifisayo, in a statement said that um, while giving an update of the diseased student, uh, Ms. Whitney Adedino, she hinted that arrangements are ongoing for other categories of the students to return to school. Um, the locals, the school will remain closed until necessary judicial processes superintended uh, superintendent over, sorry, judicial processes superintended by the state's Ministry of Justice and other ongoing administrative inquests within the purview of the Office of the Education Quality Assurance. So though they are opening those terminal classes, the judicial process is still ongoing mm. with the school concerning the death of this young girl. So I want to take the story of water. <clears throat> we still have a water crisis in Nigeria. Nigeria failed to meet the um, SDG Goal 6. We have only 10% of the Nigerian population having access to basic wash and about 67% use um, basic drinking water services per capita. They also mentioned the fact that um, based on the 2021 mapping that was done by the UN, 23% um, of Nigerians do not have access to basic water services. It is a really sad thing, but the good news is that there is a roadmap and it seems like Nigeria is moving according to the reports that the, the access to stable water is, a, is still a moving target, which right. means we're not getting there anytime soon. Okay, that is all we can take. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. 
Your View will be right back. Thank you uh, for staying with us. So yesterday, the Director General of NAVDAC, Professor Mujizla Adie, was saying that the agency um, that the, the agency has identified that 77 percent of Nigerian women make use of bleaching creams, and the figure is the highest in Africa, uh, compared to about 59 percent in Togo, 35 percent in South Africa, and 27 percent in Senegal. Um, she also said that um, she also said that we must be careful on the use of these harmful um, creams on our bodies, and it's an important time for us to talk about this because many people use um, bleaching creams. Some call it toning, some call it brightening, lightening, whitening. However, you want to whatever word uh, fits, uh, fits <laughs> you at the moment, but. She is saying that 77% of Nigerian women actually use these products and they are harmful. That's our conversation today. Um, the question is, are they really harmful? What data do we have to show that it's harmful? We're just saying it's harmful. And those that have used it over the years, how are they faring? I mean, that's our conversation today. And should we stop it completely and totally? Or should it be banned or regulated somewhat? What are your thoughts on bleaching creams in Nigeria. You can call us on 081-270-53687-091-390-7694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. All right, let's talk about this bleaching or no bleaching because uh, I always feel sometimes adults are supposed to make adult decisions, but somehow government always tries to regulate what adults choose to do with their own personal uh, space. I mean, I'm not, as long as I'm not affecting the next person, why are people, or why is government, why should government be bothered about my personal decisions uh, as long as I'm not harming anybody else? What are your thoughts? And do you agree that we should curb the use of bleaching creams or we should allow adults to be adults? I think that um, the government, hmm. you see, human beings, the, lead, the government, the leaders, stakeholders, uh, follow up from yesterday's conversation, have a responsibility to create an exemplary future, an exemplary life, a designed life for their citizens. So if, I, if I'm going to be um, burdened with skin cancer treatment in hospitals, then I would take the journey ahead and prevent skin cancer by ensuring that people don't peel off the layers of their skin and then expose their body to harsh rays from the sun that might lead to skin cancer. Some countries, knowing that diabetes is becoming a major huge a, a huge cost for the health sector go ahead of time and a, ensure the educated people that exercise cut your sugars be conscious the government that's what government is supposed to do design a better quality of life for the people people might not know what they want they might not even know what is good they might just be following the mass the mass market but the government will now look at it that the mass market might not be good for us that's why they recall some drugs because they realize, oh, this drug has harmful effects. We know that our citizens deserve better than this. They recall some cars. This car is not safe enough for our citizens, so we recall it. And so I feel that NAVDAC is doing the right thing in making people more aware of the harm that bleaching does to their body. And it is, we cannot deny the fact that when people look lighter, they look more attractive. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what are your thoughts on this, on, on NAFDAC saying that they need to find a way to curb this? I think yeah. they are doing their job. Um, as an organization, they have a role to play in helping us get informed decisions. So they can't still cut down on um, those bleaching creams and people will still insist to go for it. So when you insist, this is what you want, this is how you want to die, nobody would stop you. But then you have to pay higher, you know, saying so that you know where you're paying for your death. And I think that's how it works all over, where they feel, okay, there are some countries, for instance, alcohol, they feel we don't want our citizens drinking alcohol, 
probably um, a religious state, and then they make alcohol importation very expensive. So even if you decide to go and sin, you will be paying extra for the sin that you have decided to commit by yourself, you know? So I think they're doing the right thing. I, I think also that um, a lot of people do things because uh, other people have done, done it. They've seen outcomes. So I remember when we were growing up, the pressure of uh, the fair girls get all the jobs, and so some of us, you know, not me, you see me as the still morning. Black. Yes, and some of us decided to start bleaching. If you see them now, they are white. I can't even relate the pictures we had before and now, wow. you know, because they wanted that, you know. And um, when they write the side effects, they don't write the long-term side effects. And I don't even see most of these um, uh, um, cosmetic bottles. I don't even see side effects highlighted as such. You know, for smoking, they'll say smokers are, are liable to die young, right? There's nothing like that giving you a glimpse of what you would, you know, get at the end of the day. So you get it for the pleasure of today. I'm looking good. I'm looking okay. But you really do not understand the effect long term. Mm. And I think NAVDAC needs to insist, even if you want to start selling or you keep selling your bleaching cream, please give us the long term side effects. So that people will pick up your cup and mm. see that in the next 10 to 20 years, I may come down with cancer. Mm. And if you decide to continue, that's fine. Okay. I like that. Mm. But you see, Brian, let me come to you. Because I've heard this thing for many years. Oh, if you, if you use this cream, you might have cancer. And I have seen some, mo one of, some of my mom's friends, my mother's generation, even slightly older. They are alive today. <laughs> they, they use that thing. That, I remember that when I was a kid. These mummies mm. were using this, they were putting it in the fridge. In fact, the harmful one, what's that harmful food product? Yeah. Uh, that um, one is very harmful. Sugar. Hydro, something, 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 something. That's one, the harmful one. They used to put it in the fridge. Hydroquinone? Hydroquinone. Yes, I think that's it. Yeah. They would that put it on banned. their skin and they would, you know, and, and I remember them. They are liable. Yeah. And they are doing well, though. Wow. Yeah, I still see them at Paris today. Yeah. And their skin is so good. Their good. Like, wow. you, know, you know, what you're saying reminds me of a conversation about, you know, with someone a long time ago, and he was talking about his father that smoked for many years and he's still alive and well and strong, you know. And, but then the father eventually passed on many years after that like conversation. every other human being will. Well, and he had complications from, long, from smoking after for a long time. So that we're talking about it now it does not mean that complications may not be happening within. We don't know, you know. And of course, we know that there are different factors that affect you. Um, some people will have cancer. Some will have, um, what do you call it, organ failures, you know, different sorts of things. And if, you know, you just never know which one it is that you will that fall on. So we, things. yeah. And NAVDAC, being a professional health body, understand based on statistics and data and investigation that this is generally harmful yeah. to human beings. So it's important that they're sending out this message. I think they are fighting now. So first of all, it's important they're sending out this message because I believe that many adults, we just assume that everybody's as informed as we are. We just assume that everyone takes the time to find out these conversations of how does it affect me in the long term or in the short term. And even if it matters, you know, many people just do things because they see other people do it, because they see their favorite celebrity doing it, or they see someone who they like and admire who's done it and is doing well. I think NAVDAC's biggest problem would be social media and social media vendors. So um, before then, it used to be, you know, you know the regular place you go and get your creams. NAVDAC, we've had them do, do their regular raids, go into those markets, try to shut them down, go into pharmacies, try to shut them down. But I was watching a video of someone in Ghana selling bleach, trying to advertise bleaching creams. <laughs> And someone was asking her question. I think there's someone we follow, both of us, skin priests, who tries as much as possible to educate people on some of the products that we use. And this person obviously does not know the effect of bleaching, as she was encouraging this bleaching and toning, you know. And she's put it, she has many followers, and people are buying her products. She's in her shop with all her bleach, and she's saying this is what she's selling. So what I feel NAVDAC should be doing, find, the word will be, uh, um, influencers, NAFDAC influencers as well, <laughs> yeah. who will have some followers who you can use to tre um, educate people and bring enlightenment and sensitize people. People are not listening as much to traditional media. Yeah. They are listening to social media. They are following influencers. That is the way to go now if you want that message to yeah. you know, get there. And then secondly, that whole picture of all bleaching creams, they are all toning creams. 
those who know better or who are asking questions seem to know a little bit more. Um, and some people are able to tell you, oh, there's a percentage of aluquinone in this, my product, that does not make it harmful to me. Yeah. So we need to sit down and educate people properly. Small education, little education is just as dangerous as not knowing anything. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll open this conversation further. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this bleaching and um, we're looking at other angles. Is the pressure, societal pressure to be fair skin. Um, many say the pressure is real. Uh, many say that they, they are, they are, they are part of industries. You just said your own experience also. But are there safer ways for toning? Could it, can, can toning or lightening of your skin ever be safe? I mean, that's, those are some of the data Nigerians want to hear because Telling us not to bleach at all. Mm. It's almost as if, how can you tell me? But give me information, give me healthy options that I can use, don't you think? So unfortunately for us, we love instant gratification. Mm. People want to get it now, 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 now. Um, I think about three years ago, I started having a conversation of going into cosmetics as a business. I remember I was talking with um, one of our makeup artists at the time, Regina. We had the plan mapped out and all that. I would have started since. But then some other people gave me, got wind of what I was talking about. I said, ah, you are black. They will not buy because you are black. They want to see somebody, yo, 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 yo. And they will now feel that this is working. Because the person is fair, definitely it is working. Mm -hmm. And I said I've been doing research for this for years now. Because as a dark person, of course, I like to uh, look good glow. and glow and all that. Still maintaining my being dark, you know, but then glowing in my color, my complexion. And I've realized that we have natural ways. Now, there are natural things I've been using for years, you know. And I'm still dark, but I still look good. I still shine in my darkness. And that's what I want to use for my business. Ah, no, if you're, not, if you're not fair, they will not believe you. They will not buy. So we need people. Like, I like the uh, points that Miriam raised where we need to get influencers that have their natural color. So there are two, we have two different complexions or, or three. We have the extreme naturally fair people. Natural. You see their knuckles, everything. That's how they were born. There's something to keep maintaining that. We have the black ones like us. We have the ones in between, like top is a bit in between. There are natural products that you can use from plants and herbs, and that's what some of us are using now. We can start encouraging those sort of businesses so that people will know that it's available, it's natural. It will take a long time because you're just, you're just maintaining what you have and shining with what you have. Not that from now, I, I, use, I use a 708 found, uh, foundation. And then I'm jumping to 508. And you're wondering what is, 507, and you're wondering what is happening. Let me come to you, Takwe. Okay, so, um, hmm, how do I put it? Um, um, BC made a wonderful suggestion. Let them label on the body that we, you might have skin cancer. My dear sister, cigarette cartons Look, in developed, it's, it's horrible. Hmm. You will see lungs, you will die. You, as they put it on the pack of the mm -hmm. cigarettes, you are likely to die. Smokers die young. Mm. These skills, people, the, the man will bring out money from his pocket and as he buy the him. carton showing exactly. dead lungs. Very grotesque. Because people people will do what they people want to do. People will still do what they want to do. Just for to the correct, government. They do it here too. Yes, they do it. Yeah. I saw it. I, 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 I saw it here. Okay. Uh, I saw it here actually. I saw it. <laughs> you know, so my, um, my thought is the government will do what they can. It would reduce the number of people. Some people just by seeing that gruesome picture of a, the long looking terrible like that might choose not to smoke. Some will go ahead. They don't care. So, but the government should do the part of putting it on all creams, every cream label on the body that you are likely to have skin cancer if you do this bleaching. So, there, and there are also, there are nomenclature. Why can't doesn't like when, when I say this, that there are, no, there are different grades. There is bleaching where you go from this to um, white. white. That's like bleaching. They do injections. We have That's extreme but bleaching. Top but we also have cases where I was on the site a lot last year and I really got dark. 
I had sunburn, my skin was looking very dark. Even the makeup artist that complained that my foundation had gone shades darker. So I knew that I had to go into proper skincare grooming to get my natural skin back. Uh -huh. And that involved me using specific products, not bleaching. Obviously, you can see my skin. But I, I started getting vitamin E creams, creams that had vitamin E, that had vitamin C, that had purple mm. extracts. Mm. And those were natural mm. things to help exfoliate my right. skin and then prevent sunburn. So there is grooming and there is whitening. Yes. But let's talk about that for a second. Whitening Wait. is the problem. You enter a party, you're sitting down, and there comes this white skin yo, yo, girl. Yo. Pretty, you looking all popping and all eyes skin turn. Skin glowing. Skin glowing. And she's coming in with such confidence. And you're, you're, you're a young 22-year-old girl. And I think it's just like, oh my God, I want that. I want to be that. <laughs> Everybody just That's my it. role model. Suddenly you become the role model. <laughs> you want to have a popping skin. So now my question is, who is wrong here? Is it the girl who has chosen to, yes, bleach her skin and walk down, the, walk down and be the, the center of attention? Or the young girl who is feeling, who's, who's looking at her in awe, saying, I wish I was like this. How, who do we stop? I mean, is it, do we stop her from admiring it? Or do we stop the other lady from being who? Because the truth is that whether we like it or not, people will, people will choose to bleach. And is that, does that run negatively on young people? Let me take this call while you think about that. Good morning, um, Tunde from Magoda, you're live. Thanks. Oops, I'm so sorry for keeping you. But yeah, so... The, the reality is that we are in a country where people like to bleach and look skin and look lighter and everything. Should this stop them from NAFDAQ? <laughs> or can we can it be done in the so most So this healthy? conversation is beyond, this part of the conversation yes. for me is beyond bleaching of skin. Yeah. I just think it just has to do with beauty standards nationwide, westernized um, beauty over any other kind of beauty, which is the whiter you are, the lighter you are, the blonder you are, the more you are seen as attractive. But I would say for our generation and the other, you know, behind us, um, for the generations before us, maybe they didn't have any, uh, you know, they didn't have any role model that in, instilled in them the, yeah. the confidence or the ownership of their own natural colors. Because we would hear even our traditional songs, they had songs that highlighted the light-skinned woman and yeah. put her above all others. Yeah. But for us, I know that for us, we looked at people like Naomi Campbell. We looked at people, you know, dark-skinned Hollywood actors and actresses, and we saw how beautiful they were. So for us, we could say, yes, you're a you light-skinned, beautiful person, but there's also a dark-skinned, beautiful person who is on the same stage as that light-skinned person, or even a bigger stage. I mean, today, Naomi Campbell's dark looks, you know, is like the inspiration for many black girls around the world, whether you're um, African originally or you're African-American. So when we have these sort of influencers, when we have this sort of inspiration, they help us. Um, you know, to accept who we are and be confident in who we are. I think black skin is beautiful. Right. I know of a friend who said, used to live in Europe, and she says because she was so dark skin and so different from everyone, anytime she walked into the room, you know, she got a lot of attention. Yes. So I don't know if the white people were now looking to her and saying, how do I get this dark? You know, that's why I said that it's beyond, yeah. you know, it now is beyond the right. skin color because we know how they have made, the part, uh, black to mean, right. you know, you're less yeah. than. Let me take but, this call. Yeah. Okay, take your call. Um, Rita from Joss, you're live. Go ahead, please. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning Rita. Morning. Good morning. I'm a friend, I'm Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, Rita. <laughs>
Thank, Thank you, Rita. Rita. Let, me, let, let, let me talk about Rita for a minute okay. because, I mean, when she was talking, I was just taking my mind back to when I was in school and the pressure is real. When you're, when you're young, 18, 19, 20, your girlfriends, they're all going out and that's a season where you're clubbing, you're partying. I can understand it, Rita, feeling a certain way because all your friends are fair skin and you have that pressure that maybe I can just turn up a little bit, but just, you know, let me lighten up a bit so I can blend in. And then from then on, it gets lighter and lighter. Before you know it, you yeah, must not control. Yeah. So how do we help someone like Rita, who are in different conditions and in their life, where, how do they be, have confidence in who they are? What can we do to help them glow? So you have people on this, your table, that have, we all grew up yeah. the same, yes. we are millennials, yes. you know, and we saw this pressure, especially for most of us who were in Lagos. We came to the hub of entertainment. We wanted to do entertainment, wanted to model, wanted to do beauty pageantry, and I did quite a number of them. The competition was tough to the teeth. But there's something that I realized, and I don't know how I got it. Um, I just realized that even at that age, I was comfortable in my own skin. Mm. I knew what mattered most. I knew that, okay, they had the shine when we get into a room, but I have the voice. Mm. I have the intelligence. Mm. And except you don't hear me speak, you will notice me. Mm. Except you don't hear me speak. And even as I went further for jobs and interviews, except I don't speak, you will, except maybe it's, like those, I didn't get a lot of um, photo jobs. That's what the commercials where mm. it's just the face. I didn't get a lot of those at the time. But if it had to do with conversations, it had to do with you speak, and I would always get the job, right? So I knew where my strength was, and I built on it. And I built that confidence. I was comfortable in my own skin. And I'll tell young people around me, I have daughters that I'm raising them, and I'm beginning to teach them that look around you. In your skin, you can make an impact. Mm. We all have different shades. In your skin, you would do well. You go on TV, you come on this table. It's just a few of you that are light. We are majorly dark here. Mm. And we're making impact. So show them those examples and tell them, even if you want to do anything to glow up, go with natural products. Right. From your kitchen. I make things from turmeric. I make things from uh, carrots. Um, carrots. I have carrot oil. I, have, I make natural things that, okay, I just want to shine. Mm. So instill that self-esteem, loving you in your package. Mm. Because every package that God has given to you for this earthly experience, this is not who we are. We are here for a reason. Fantastic. The package is for a reason. I will not be where I am today if I was light-skinned. Mm. I would have deviated from my path. Mm. So stick to your path I love and glow in that. I love that because I wish somebody told me that when I was younger. I'll come to my story. Let me take, take Alex from Joss. We have lots of Joss calls this yes. morning. Yes. Good morning, Alex. You're live. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking about Welcome to the show. Uh, I want to just add that contribution is, I think sometimes the matter of perception. My boss, who is from China here in the north, who always tell me that, um, he says it in Hausa, let me say it in Hausa, I'll say it. Faramachi, koma yani tai. What that means is that a fair lady, even if she's an Obanje, she's okay. So that's the perception some people hold. That once the lady is fair, then that's it for us. Your, your, your volume is, your TV volume is high, so we can't hear you and it's really difficult. Okay, let me, let me, the way, while you're talking, I remembered something. Because the truth is that some of us didn't have that confidence as a young person. There's some people out there, they are in university, they're young, and they're still finding themselves. I remember that when, when I was a bit younger, I had two, 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 two incidences. I had a car accident that I lost I, I gained a lot of weight because I couldn't exercise. I lost my entire right thigh, and I was on wheelchair for months. I was on crutches. I was, and even after I healed, I still felt really low. I didn't look pretty. I, I had to shave off my entire head. I had a scar. It took at least a year to heal. So I couldn't wear, I couldn't have, I couldn't grow, grow my hair. I had to be wearing head ties, you know. And a young girl that is, is like, like me then would have, maybe so would have heard what you just said and believed that, okay, even though this is a phase, where this is happening. When I'm ready, when, when I begin to evolve into who I, I become, I become a better person. But at that moment, I was down. So that moment, I thought, oh, I could bleach. My mom, I told you, my, my mom sent me cream from Nigeria. Then I, I got the cream and I, was, I started using it. But I, I just felt really down. I felt like an outcast. My friends were going out. I would say I don't want to go to club because I just felt that, what am I going to go to club? What, what am I going to do? We all wear nice, skimpy looking things. I'm here, I have to wear, you know, I, I, can't, I can't look 
mm. like, like you guys. So I chose to stay back. So the pressure is real. Is. For a young university student, it's real. I, I remember that time when I, said, when I got the cream. I was using it, and I was feeling really good, you know. My, I started getting a bit lighter. My best friend then, Dalak, was like, ah, you're looking very nice and pretty. I was, uh, it was helping my confidence. My brother now sent me, after a month, Mariel, I'm getting lighter. Are you bleaching? <laughs> he told me. Are you bleaching? Imagine, finally, he got me to confess. And I said, Mommy sent you this. You now call my mom. Then I sent this girl. You now pour everything away. I said, you don't need to bleach. Mm -hmm. What is all this nonsense? So he stopped. He nipped it in the bud. But the truth is that the pressure is real, guys. Yeah, the pressure never so, stops, actually. Mm. The pressure never stops. Um, so as a young person, you're trying to look like your parents. When you get married, you will see that you have children and your body changes. The pressure mm. is still there. Ah. The pressure of, ah, my body is not the way my body used to be. The body you did not appreciate as a young girl. You will not be it missing back. it when you have children. <laughs> You'll be like, ah, and I used to be like this. So now this shape is no longer the way it used to be. There's another level of pressure. Hey. Oh, I want to maintain being a hot housewife. Another pressure. Oh, I'm, oh my, we're now in our 50s. Our children are going. going. Everybody is looking. Me. I want to be, there uh, will always be pressure. It is that you must always speak to yourself. Hallelujah. Ah, you see that speaking to you. You cannot wait for the world to speak to you. You must speak mm. to yourself. Tell yourself you're beautiful. Tell yourself you're okay. Tell yourself that you will get over it. Mm. And that language, you what you say to yourself might end up drowning out the world if you are consistent in saying the right things to yourself. Love yourself. Yeah, 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 that, yeah that, that's, that's, that's good. Me. Yes, that's because fantastic. I'm thinking of Ooh, my... I want, I want your point. Okay. But let me take Oluwashio that comes to you. Oluwashio, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're live. Morning, Go guys. ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, good morning, guys. Um, I want us to... This is me, uh, a me statement glowing in your skin. Anyway, before I go on, you guys are glowing in your skin color. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah yes. And um, I'm going to forgive you my opinion. You see me, I think anyone that goes for that bleaching has this um, low self-esteem. Mm. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. You know, has this, you know, low self-esteem. Because you just have to accept you as you are. And again, you see, we don't want confusion. Because, you know, the bleach is not going to change the genetic code of your skin color. So now, if you, are, if, you are, if you used to be black and you are now white, if you give back, you are not going to give back to a bleach baby. So now, even if it doesn't have any medical implication, why not consider the generation next? Ah, uh, mommy, how come you are, you are white and I am black? So now we should consider that. And then uh, for the government, I think the government should regulate because, you know, we have had, you know, different stories, medical um, uh, 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 side effects and all of that, you know, you know from, bleaching, from bleaching. So government should do a kind of regulation. If you are not a skin care specialist, as in what I mean by specialist, a doctor, you should not be in the business of... Right. Thank you very much. Let me take this tweet, then I have to go on a break. I don't take your point, Miriam. It says, those women that, Mariah, that, this is what this is to me. Those women that bleached then don't look good, good today. Oh. Those ones you know have money to maintain it. Mm. That's another point. Stay with us, <laughs> Mariah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing. So, yeah, yeah. Let me come to my. Yes, I just wanted to say, you know, um, DC, you mentioned using natural products to, you know, instead to maintain your skin. I just wanted to say that even natural products can be harmful if you used for bleaching. And we have products that, natural products that people use for extreme bleaching. So, so because the reason I'm mentioning it is many girls have been sold organic natural products mm. and you think it's healthy but it has the same mm. effect as if you were using any chemicals for bleaching uh, but i was going to say that growing up i think for me what's helped me is that i had family that this was a conversation i mean when you're raised by many women they have this conversation of different skin issues and i heard a lot of how, you know from them how you just 
maintain your color. They will mention maybe someone that they used to know who bleached and look at how she's not looking good anymore. You know, so it was in my subconscious. So I, I never had that pressure to look any way, any other way than I, I did. And then I went and in Joss, I have said this so many times, there are many black beauties. I mean, you look at a black person and be like, I wish I was as dark as you. My brother, they call him Kamal Cole because they say he's charcoal. <laughs> and he has owned the name. I think this is just something that they'll use as a teenager to make fun of you. But he's owned the name. And for me, if you grow up in a family or you have a support system that constantly uplifts you and tells you how beautiful yeah. and good you are, you're likely to grow up and go out and not have those um, pressures. Yes. Um, I remember I made a friend during, you know, when you're doing like your SSC period, I made a friend who went to a different school from me and she would tell me of how um, the school had a lot of Igbo girls and we know Igbo girls are light skin. Yeah, so she, she, she's Ghanaian and she was quite dark and she told me all the creams that she started using to be just like them. Those girls were also using those creams and she was surprised that, how come you didn't have those pressures, you know? Maybe because of my own upbringing, I already had that. I was already pumped with that confidence, mm. so I didn't have to, um, you know, I, I didn't feel the pressure. I'm saying this because of the young girl that's out there, one. I'm saying it also for the adults around young people. Exactly. You can use your voice to teach them. Absolutely. You encourage them. When they see you, how happy and confident you are in your own skin. And then if you made mistakes, I have an auntie, there's a particular product, I won't say the name. She, has, she told me from when I was small, every time I think about bleaching creams or soaps, she will mention that product. I remember how she said, never use this. <laughs> Look at what it's done to me. You know, so I saw her own example and it rang in my head for so long. And I'm hoping that the conversations I'm having about skin too is influencing my daughter. Right. And when she goes out, there will be no yellow person or yellow people or people, you know. <laughs> okay, no, you have a call. <laughs> and I'm grand Hello, going Toby. On on. How are you Sorry. doing? Sorry for keeping you. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're live. Go Good ahead, morning. please. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, I want to... Okay, so let me, let me start um, from what BT said earlier. She talked about being comfortable in your skin. Papa talked about societal pressure. And I think the last caller also talked about societal pressure, you know, not having inferiority complex and the rest of them. But I have a question for you beautiful ladies. I'm looking at your beautiful faces and this thought came to my mind. And the, thought, the question is this. Is there a difference between somebody who bleaches her skin, somebody who does bomb, uh, BBL, you know, the Brazilian bomb, somebody who wears a wig? Do you understand? Because could it be that we're all trying to be Western? Could it be that we're not exactly confident in our skin, just like Miriam just said? Do you understand? Miriam was saying, you know, you need to be confident in your skin, in your hair, in your, you know, should we be confident in our hair, in our bum, in everything that we do? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, I love it because sometimes when we talk like that, it looks like we're calling out the hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. So you pick the one that you're strong in, you pick the one that you're, and you call it out. So for me, anytime I discuss things like this, I always talk about it also from the health point of view. At what cost? To what extent? Yes, um, <coughs> I wear the wigs for, you know, for TV, for outing, you know, because... And, you know, when I sit down and I question myself, is it that I'm not proud of my own hair? So I am proud of African hair. I see African hair. I love Tokpa's hair. I love YK's hair, you know. And I love the way they're able to carry their hair and, you know, wear it confidently. So it's not that I don't like African hair. I don't find African hair beautiful. I feel that my own particular hair type makes it hard for me to be able to wear it out. And so that is an insecurity, right? But I'm not saying that black, okay, so it's just like, I'm not now saying that black skin in its entirety is a bad thing. Mm. I'm not saying that, um, I, so what I'm saying is you can now, you know what your own insecurities are, yeah. but if what you're doing does not affect <coughs> your health, mm -hmm. so you're doing the BBL and it's not something that you have to yeah. lay your life on the table, there are too many um, issues. I can't compare them. So I can't, yeah, I cannot compare them because it's not about my life. 
Yeah. It's not about my health. So, so there are some beauty, there are some beauty, there are some beauty products that you can. It's about choices. If you compare them. You can as well say don't wear Western clothes mm. because they are not African. You can choose not to. No, no, no. I'm just saying, let's go the long haul now. Yes. Don't wear Western clothes. Just wear only your Adira and Ankara. That's I all you have. Phone. Don't use phones don't because you are not making it here. It's Western, uh, you know. Don't do this and don't. It, the list goes on and on. But the idea of the whole thing is, like she said, is it directly affecting my health? Am I wearing a piece of my wig like I wear a piece of my clothes? This is like the most convenient for me. I am busy. I do not have time to use 30 to 45 minutes to brush one hair every day. I don't have it. And I'm sorry to disappoint anybody, but I don't have that time, <laughs> right? So this, as I'm picking my clothes in the day, I have different colored wigs. I'm picking, okay, which color of wig will match the color of shoe that I'm wearing today? <laughs> for real? In my head, is a piece of clothing. Right. And it doesn't affect me naturally. I've worn my natural hair here alter. several times. It doesn't af um, alter who I am. It doesn't affect my beauty in any way, even though they say I have solar panel. This is even covering my solar panel, and I'm confident to focus on what I'm, and not fighting people on YouTube <laughs> as I'm making my point. Do you understand? So, so the thing is, the, the message here is, we will all pick and choose, but in, in, in how we pick and choose, we must be wise. And it goes beyond just picking and choose, because if we say, let's go down this road, we will go to our religion as well. We all worship a white-looking somebody hey, as God. It hey. goes deep. No, 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 no. Why Shemi, we want to keep Western Why away. Listen now, we I want to keep Western. No, it goes that way. Because the thing That's about this thing, thing is, um, the happens. eyes are the window to the soul. And it goes to a subconscious level where naturally, even children begin to feel that light-skinned people are superior. Mm -hmm. It's natural. And that's why I applaud all those people who are creating baby dolls of yeah, dark, dark-skinned dark baby dolls. The children are beginning to see and relate with it's okay. Sometimes my daughter will come back and say she wants to add attachment to her hair because her hair is not that long. And I say, your hair is long, it's kinky. It's just that when air touches it, it shrinks. We have a lot of shrinkage. And I give her examples when I comb back my hair and when I allow it shrink. I say, that's the hair that God has given to us. So we cannot compare everything. If we say, let us abandon Western and be African, okay, we will so abandon even some of the food that we are eating. Okay. So it's okay. not, I don't think it's completely Western because it's not about that Westernization or else BBL is not Western. Yeah. It's the African body people are put. So I don't think it falls under the same as clothes or phones yeah. or using gadgets. I think they're two different conversations. In I this. And, I, I, and I agree um, with her that we can't compare it. Um, it's invasive. The bleaching is invas invasive. Surgeries are invasive. And so we can't compare it with um, someone that is putting on African, non wearing Africans are wearing mm. But okay. let me talk, let me make this final point. I know we need to go. Final point. Please, 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 no matter what you want to do to your skin, never ever bleach your child's skin. Don't bleach ah. babies, don't bleach children, don't bleach teenagers. Let people grow and make the decision by themselves. Yeah. As a parent, yes, you're responsible for the children, but don't say you want your child to be lighter skinned than their ah. natural color and then you will damage their skin as babies. Mm. The damage is huge and it is irresponsible for parents to do and such. That's Thank problem. you. Okay. That, was that is all we can take on this segment. It's, th it's Tuesday. We have to have some health talk. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Last Friday was World Tuberculosis Day. It was a worldwide event that aimed to raise public awareness of tuberculosis and the efforts made to prevent and treat this disease. In commemorating the day, we have an infectious diseases physician, Department of International Internal Medicine, Luth, Dr. Adefolari Okwawoye, MBBS. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. So let's remind our viewers what tuberculosis is. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, tuberculosis is, uh, it, it's, it's a disease uh, which is caused by a bacteria. Um, it's called uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. 
and uh, it's uh, it could be a very uh, dusty disease actually. But the good thing is that um, it has a cure. Uh, you can totally uh, be cured about it, and uh, it's it's a very serious public health problem. Uh, almost every year, more than half a million Nigerians uh, infected with this disease, and out of that, about half of that, that's almost 250,000 people die. That's a lot of deaths. And uh, it, I'm so glad that uh, we have an opportunity to talk about this here. Yes, so uh, we know that um, every March 24th, there's usually a walk to create awareness. But um, what other aspects of um, awareness, aside from the walk, do you engage in? Do you have um, every hospital center have like a tuberculosis uh, section where you can give information? Or what other things do you do aside from just the walks? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there are so many things that we do. Uh, so different uh, people, have, different organizations within the health sector have different activities for that day. Uh, the walks, like you said, are part of it. Sometimes you do seminars, you do symposiums. Um, sometimes you release statements on social media. Uh, we release statements on Twitter, on Instagram about this day, try to educate people. Uh, for example, the theme of the last um, celebration was the clock is ticking, uh, showing that um, the damage to TB is unrelenting, uh, from TB is unrelenting. And um, just like the way the clock is always moving, this uh, disease is going on, whether you are well of it or not, it's killing people almost on a daily basis. And so uh, we have so many activities, and this is also one of them, actually, trying to just uh, increase the awareness on tuberculosis, how, um, how, you can, how it can be diagnosed and how it can be treated, and most importantly, how it can be prevented. Hmm, you say that it kills people every day. So how would you describe, if you yeah. were to compare tuberculosis in Nigeria and Africa, and maybe, you know, we always use the developed countries, how would you say we're doing in comparison to them? That is, in how widespread the disease is or how often people get sick and the treatments available compared to what we have in developed countries? Hmm, that's a serious question. Yeah. Uh, quite wide, actually, also. Now, for tuberculosis, it's more endemic here. It's a problem. It's a local problem. So the same way you have malaria as a problem in Nigeria, and it's not a problem in the U.S. It's the same way you have tuberculosis as a problem here. But you see, the advantage of that being a problem here is that it's something we are very familiar with. We're very skilled at diagnosing it. We pick it up very fast. It uh, comes up to uh, the forefront of our thinking many times when we present with similar symptoms. So that's the advantage. For example, if you travel outside the country, Lunat, Lunat, you can pick up Lunat from uh, almost anywhere in this country. But to get Lunat in the US, you have to really, really, really <laughs> track. And that's why a lot of Nigerians, you know, uh, take, take their drugs along with them when they're traveling. You know, so it, it's, um, we, we're doing quite well with the treatment because it's something we are familiar with, it's something that uh, every medical student we trained uh, is trained to recognize. So we pick it up quite, uh, quite early. And, uh, but because of the body of disease, is far more care. So we have far more deaths, you know, and that's why, I mean, I mean for example, if, if you're traveling outside the country, uh, I, I, you know, they ask you to do tests for tuberculosis and all that. We don't bother with that here because it's our problem. But they are worried about you bringing it in. So they want to check and make sure that you're not carrying what we call latent TB. That's TB that is in the system, but it has not um, really shown up, you know. So it, it, it's, a, it, it's a double edged sword. Right. The advantage that we have here is that it's a lot. And so we see it, we are very experienced with it. We have very good treatment pathways for it and we have good successes. So long as people show up on time and take their medications. Okay. Yes, so I wanted to ask you, because it's something very preventable. Why, why are we not having, why is this not something like the way we're doing with polio, wiping out polio? Why can't we wipe out tuberculosis by getting everybody vaccinated? Ah. Wipe out, yeah, wipe out is difficult. I mean, in the entire <laughs> yeah. human history, there's only one disease that has indeed been eradicated. And that's smallpox, which was eradicated in the 1970s. The last case was in Somalia in 1979. Before you can totally eradicate a disease, uh, there are so many things that need to, uh, so many lines need to fall in place as to the fact that uh, there's a direct organism that you can tackle. Um, there's, a, there's only one person that is um, carrying the disease. There's no intermediate host anywhere. It's not as if you wipe it out in man and the disease is resting in animals or something, you know. So it's not that easy. Now, even polio, we say polio is eliminated. Uh, not eradicated because we are still having some cases of wild type polio here and there, but very sporadic cases. So yes, there's a lot of work going on with tuberculosis, but it's more difficult. There's a vaccine for it. That's the BCD vaccine, which 
everybody should have had. I mean, most of us would have this car on the left um, shoulder to show that we have a BCG. If you don't have it, I'll be very worried. But most of it, most of us have it there. It's very good coverage. But the BCG uh, really works better for what we call extra pulmonary tuberculosis. That's the one that affects other systems in the body. TB is a very funny disease. It can affect anywhere. Though it mainly stays in the lungs, you know. But uh, the BCG really protects the one outside the lungs. And then it is highly contagious. Uh, you could have one case of TB in a house and before you know it, it spreads to everybody in that house. So all these things make it quite um, difficult. And then, of course, it's a long disease. When we treat it, sometimes we treat for six months. Sometimes we treat for 12 months. In those six, 12 months, it's very easy to jump to another person. So we are still very, very far from uh, eliminating or even eradicating tuberculosis. But I love your vision. It's a, it's a very, very ambitious one. I will try right. to work towards it in the health sector. What are some of the symptoms? Because this is a country where half the time you enter the hospital, they're diagnosing you for either malaria or typhoid. So sometimes, what are the symptoms, especially parents, to look out for? And at what point do you, begin, you have to isolate? At what point do you think it's time to isolate a patient from the home? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, major symptom of tuberculosis is cough. If it is pulmonary tuberculosis, like I said, it can affect the lung. The lungs is the major organ that it affects. But it can basically affect any organ in the body, anyone, the brain, the spine, the kidneys, anywhere. It, it, it could go anywhere. But for the lungs, uh, usually the person coughs. And the cough of TB is a cough that lasts usually a bit long. You know, it lasts for more than two weeks. So what we usually say is that if you are coughing for more than two weeks, uh, we should be worried, you know, and you have to check. Especially when with the cough, you are now losing weight. Not as if you are going to be gym or, or you are fasting or you are trying to lose weight intentionally, call it unintentional so weight loss. People, doctor, when you start to lose weight. Uh, people cough daily. Yeah, but, I mean, people cough, but so what's the duration of this cough we're talking about? How long do you know that, okay, this is something I need to take to the hospital? Oh, sorry, I missed it. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, two, two weeks. weeks. Oh, sorry. Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks, How cough of more than two weeks. Okay. How intense and as well? When it is accompanied, ah, 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 you mentioned it. Sorry, say that again, please. <laughs> if you have a cough, yes, you know, if you have a I said, how do you measure the intensity of cough? Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, cough. It's, just, it's a cough. It doesn't have to be the active. That's all we see as tobacco. You know, but any kind of cough you're having more than two weeks, please. Okay. Because it's not only TB, but anything more than two weeks, you should be worried. Yeah. You know, come into the hospital. And especially, like I said, if the cough is accompanied by weight loss, unintentional weight loss, you know, like you're trying to lose weight, but you're just seeing you're losing weight, you're getting tired, you're sweating at night. I mean, these people, they sweat. Sometimes the whole bed is soaked, you know, oh, and then you're yeah. having fevers. I mean, there are people sick around you. Now, then you have to be worried. I mean, this is not a normal cough, okay. you know. So, but you see, our people, they have cough. They go and take cough syrup. They try to suppress it. But like I said, when you have cough more than two weeks, anybody with cough more than two weeks, uh, we usually recommend that you right. get to the hospital okay. and probably get a TB test. Yeah. So, so it seems to me that the one that affects the lungs, at least you have the cough to show for it. How do, would you know if it's TB that's affecting the brain or something else that you can that oh. doesn't show as cough. He said, "Oh, that's uh, that's 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 the question we we'll ask our medical students when they are about to write their exams. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. it's quite difficult, you know. Um, yes, but usually you have weight loss. Um, you have systemic symptoms. You know, the person is losing weight unintentionally. Systemic. And um, if it's for example, if it's in the brain, the person may start to be a bit irrational. You know, start doing some one on one." You know, like we say to you, start getting angry and you start talking on point. Uh, the neck will start getting stiff, you know, so you, that you tend to be like, maybe there's a problem there. Uh, if it's something in the stomach, the stomach will start to get swollen, okay? If it's uh, the TB that are causing the intestine. So, you know, so it, it has a lot of ways it can show up. But most importantly, maybe if I could say, is that the person starts feeling sick, the person loses weight. And this is not like you say the ubiquitous malaria typhoid. You have treated malaria once, twice. It is not going. It is not malaria. And right, it is yeah. not small malaria, small typhoid. You need to seek uh, expert care because something sinister may be ongoing. And the challenge sometimes we have in the hospital is our patients present too late. So how, and there's nothing anybody can do. How do we prevent tuberculosis? Mm. Prevention. Sorry, I didn't get that. How do we prevent it? What are the things we need to do to avoid... Prevention of tuberculosis is multifactorial. You know, like
like I told you, you know, the BCG vaccine is one of those things we do. Uh, where we give people the uh, vaccine, it helps, you know, like I said, to prevent one form of tuberculosis. Another way we try to prevent it is quickly diagnosing cases. Mm. We're having a bit of um, breakup. We can't hear you, Doctor. Dr. Pawoye, are you there? In the most yeah, sorry. Yeah, I am here. We lost you for a minute. Probably is the network. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, am I back? Yes, you are. Okay, apologies for that. That's the Nigerian network. Okay, <laughs> so like I was saying, no, that, um, with the ways to prevent TB, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> Although I was talking about uh, the ways we prevent tuberculosis, we start from the vaccination. Uh, we vaccinate every newborn with a PCG vaccine. It helps. Really, really, really good. Right. It was a long way. And then and I also talked about quickly identifying cases and taking them out, isolating them before quickly treating those cases. Right. You know, and making sure that they don't spread it to other people. Uh, if we have, have a better quality of life, better socioeconomic circumstances, there's uh, no overcrowding, people are living in well lit uh, uh, spaces uh, with uh, a lot of good ventilation. Yeah. All right. those are things that we can do to prevent these um, deadly diseases. Right. All right. Okay, so for those people who are not vaccinated... And also, um, it, it, it's, it's highly linked with HIV. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So for those people who are not vaccinated and um, they are not aware that they have tuberculosis and they find out at the late end, is there any hope for them? From tuberculosis. Did you get that? From tuberculosis. Dr. Kwaoye, did you get that? I think we've lost him. Hello, sir. To piece it together, if I could... Uh, we didn't hear what yeah, you said. Yeah, I'm with you. Can you hear me? No, now we're hearing you. you get it. Now? now we're oh, hearing you. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah, so what I'm saying is that if the question you were asking was if someone is just unvaccinated and they discover they have TB, is there any hope for them, right? Did I get that? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, like I said, if you are in Nigeria, you are not vaccinated, I'm very worried because we have a very robust system of vaccination. And uh, it's one of those vaccines that we take from the first day the person is born. In fact, I know uh, parents that will not allow you uh, to come and visit their newborns if they have not been vaccinated. You know, that's how strong and how successful we have been with that particular campaign. So, not vaccinated. So, a bit too, we, we, we take the we will we'll, we'll treat you. I mean, you come into the office, we'll make a diagnosis and we'll treat. The good thing is that this treatment is free. Uh, we have very good programs for that. Okay. Totally, totally free. The entire course of um, awesome. treatment. I mean, yes, we have to pay some small monies for some drugs and all that, but it's free. And it's something very good uh, that we have been able to do here because, uh, for example, for multi drug resistant TB, that's the senior form of TB, which happens when people don't take their drugs off because this is a drug you take for six months. And the average engineer cannot complete anti malaria of three days. Right. They will use it for one day. Once the fever is gone, they will stop. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, it, it's a bit like, um, like uh, you know, right. I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm a Yoruba man, like Abija. You no, know, trust me, we, we know. Abijah, then, then, your yeah. conversation. So, if you don't, don't kill. If you don't, if you don't kill Abijah properly, then and he, when you shoot back. him and he manages to escape and come back, call it bad about Abijah, he can right. then, you know, right. and that's how Dr. Kwawe, infections. So when, yeah, quiet. Right. Yeah, we have to wrap up with you, but uh, because before you came on, we had discussed um, um, bleaching the skin. And since you're an infectious disease physician, do you have an idea the dangers of um, skin disease or those who have used prolonged bleaching creams? Just give us an idea of if, what you know about this. Or if there isn't any. Thank you very much. The question is more suited to a dermatology anyway. Okay, right. But yeah, there are so many dangers of bleaching, but the most dangerous is probably skin cancers. Uh, the, because, you know, you, the, skin, the skin loses its natural protection from the rays of the sun, and then there's a very, very, very cruised risk of skin cancer. That's a bad one. A lot of times when people have it, it's difficult to cure. It usually kills them. So, I mean, right. it's really not what it is. Unfortunately, there are a lot of on licensed people here and they're doing all those all sorts of things you know so thank you for that uh, thank you uh, very much dr okpawi it was a pleasure having you on the show to share your thoughts especially on tuberculosis it was celebrated last week friday and it's important that every year we remind ourselves the importance of ensuring every baby, baby is properly vaccinated and remind people on how to ensure they can um 
get it quickly diagnosed. If not, it could lead to death. That's all we can take from today's show. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.